Hey, Joy, what time is it? It's time for the Cruise Day Fun Podcast. That's right. And this week on the Cruise Day Fun Podcast, we are going to be talking about packing for your cruise. Oh, boy, yes. We've got some awesome tips, or I should say Joy has got some awesome tips on how to pack for your cruise to make your cruise organized, well-planned, so you have everything you need and nothing you don't. Let's start by talking about suitcases and carry-ons. So what do you suggest for a cruise? Uh, let's say it's a short cruise, three days, three days, three nights, whatever you want to call it. What should you think about taking for bags? Or what do you suggest? Well, I always suggest that if you're doing a short cruise, just to use a carry-on bag, bag mm -hmm. like a, an overnight bag or something like that. And also always have like a uh, backpack that you can carry on that you have with you. Such So you have your medicine, you have your change of clothes in case you want to go swimming mm -hmm. and um, just whatever necessity items that you need to have. So you're saying basically like for an individual person, one, one a bag, a smaller bag, like a carry-on size bag, and then a backpack or something like that. Exactly. What about for a longer cruise, like a seven day, 10 day, something like that? Would you change it up a little bit? I would. So it really depends on what type of cruise it, it will be. If it's going to be like to Alaska or if mm -hmm. it's going to be somewhere where it's cooler or warm, you want to dress for the weather that will be sure. there. So Sure. And we'll get into that a little more as mm -hmm. far as specific uh, outfits and that sort of thing. Uh, I know you'll enjoy that. But let's talk about one of the most controversial, controversial packing, not just cruise packing, but packing in general, one of the most controversial topics. Actually, I've got two of them. First off, packing cubes or not packing cubes. Oh, well. I... First of all, you want to tell, in case anybody doesn't know, what's a packing cube? A packing cube is a, is a cloth, um, cloth cube, Ziploc, or not Ziploc, zippered cube. Mm -hmm that you can use to make packing organization easier. Okay. So you can put like all your shirts in your, all your shirts or t-shirts in one, or you can have mm -hmm. a cube that has just your uh, underwear and bras and, well, and I, sleep shirts. Yeah, I don't do that. Or pajamas, but, so. Okay. And I suppose one benefit of that is if you really don't want to have to, if you're doing a short cruise, for example, and you don't want to totally unpack and put them all in the drawers, is you could take out the cubes and kind of just stick them in a yeah. drawer or whatever and right. just grab what you need from the cubes. Right. Exactly. It's very handy. Okay. And I know you like doing that. I usually use it for a couple of things, but controversial topic number two. This is a big one. Okay. I'm ready. When you pack, fold or roll. Ooh. And you want to explain what that means? So some people feel that if you roll your clothes, you you have much more room to pack. Other people feel like they they fold their clothes and mm -hmm. it's the same amount of space that you would have available versus rolling rolling. So mm -hmm. I I guess I do a combination yeah. of the two. So it depends on the clothing item, yeah. such as, you know, if it's a dress or it's a long dress or if it's a bulky item, mm -hmm. sometimes it's easier to fold than versus trying to roll if mm -hmm. it's a bulky item. So sure. it really depends on the item, the clothing I, item itself. I think that makes a lot of sense. Folding is the traditional way. I guess that's the way I learned to pack when I was growing up and that's the way you usually will if you put stuff in a drawer at home you're going to fold it not roll it but rolling it allows you to get the clothes a little tighter in there but like you said it really depends on the, the type of garment how well it works right so yeah. sometimes rolling like your jeans may work but if you're trying mm -hmm. to roll like a dress dress pants or a, a, a nice really fancy dress mm -hmm. rolling isn't always the best yeah. Sometimes then you need a hanging suitcase. Okay. It's a, that's I think that's helpful. So let's move on. Um, another topic, very big day, the first day, when uh, embarkation day they call it, 
when you're boarding. Now, I, this is kind of packing, kind of not, but it, it goes into the whole equation. What are your thoughts on what to wear on embarkation day? What to wear when you're boarding the ship? Is there any special thoughts you should think about in that case? My rule of thumb is you want to dress comfortable because okay. you'll be doing a lot of things. You'll be you'll be bringing your suitcase. Mm -hmm. um, you want to dress very comfortably so you're not fussy or having to worry about your clothes getting caught or having too fancy of an outfit or not sure or being too casual for like if you want to have take pictures mm -hmm. when you get on board you want to look nice so yeah yeah embarkation day and, and this is we're a little out of the suitcase here talking about this packing top uh, topic here but i think for me i would suggest shoes Comfortable shoes is very important. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying, yeah, wear shoes. Wear comfortable shoes. That's my biggest tip uh, because you're going to be walking a little bit. You're going to be standing in line and going through security, going through check-in. You might have to wait a little bit. And then you're going to be walking on board and then probably walk around a little bit to explore the ship before you get to your room and you can change your shoes. So don't put on those. I'm not saying there's anybody out that does this, but I heard that some people like to get really fancy, pretty shoes on so they look good for the big day, but then they regret it because they're not comfortable. Right. Their feet hurt. Yeah. That's so happened. wear comfortable shoes. I think that that helps a lot, but I think comfort the, is, the, is a great tip. And also wear comfortable clothing. So you don't want to wear, uh, for, for women, you don't want to wear such a fancy dress that you you have to worry about when you go to the buffet that you spill something on it oh. god forbid and then you know your whole day is ruined because you spilled <laughs> oh. food on yourself yeah. or yeah and you can't you can't get to your suitcase because your suitcase is typically taken to your room for you right and you might be wearing that stain around for another couple hours before right you get, and yeah. be embarrassed so yeah i definitely you just want to be comfortable so if you're comfortable in a flowy comfortable dress you know not for me or if you're more comfortable in jeans and a t-shirt mm -hmm. you know wear what you wear what is comfortable to you because uh -huh. you'll be doing a lot of walking yep. and sitting and good let's move on to what goes with your outfit on embarkation day your carry-on you mentioned it before a backpack or some sort of a and it doesn't doesn't mean necessarily carry-on style luggage but what you're going to take onto the ship with you when you board and you're going to have with you until you get access to your stateroom what kind of things do you suggest people put in those uh carry-on bags or backpacks well important things such as your your important documents like your mm. passport any medical yeah. document that you may have or if you are, are need a birth certificate for your kids mm -hmm. or any important document that you need yep. to have what or else besides if there is like a covid mm -hmm. uh Oh, well, that's the word we shall not, shall not mention. What what about what about medication? Right, you need to mm -hmm. have your medication. If you have, if you do take medication, mm -hmm. you, it's important that you have your medication with you at all times. Just because, in case that your luggage doesn't arrive to your room, yeah, then you then your you're yeah, able to take your medication. Yeah, it's so. easier to replace clothes and that sort of thing once you're on the cruise. I, I've never personally encountered, talked to anybody that didn't get their luggage eventually, but having at least your medication for that day in case the luggage gets really delayed. But I like I do like to put my medication for the week in my carry-on bag that I have with me during the day, along right. with the uh, on, on embarkation day. So I think that's a good tip. What else should they have in the bag, bag besides their documents and medication? What do you suggest? You know, some people like to have bring a book along mm -hmm. or have a game that they can play with the families while they're waiting. Right. You know, or um, I like to have my phone with me so I can just make sure I have everything and review. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it helps if you're needing, if you have wait time, you can always play phone games or read <laughs> on yeah. your phone. So. Yes, it's, it's, we all are very familiar with the phone games. So um, you also want to make sure because you have a phone mm -hmm. with you that you also bring your charger. Oh, yeah. So, 
it doesn't do any good if you bring your phone and you leave your charger at home or in the car. Mm -hmm. Or even put it in your check bag. And if, you, if you, your phone dies while you're waiting, maybe you can at least find an outlet. I mean, I've seen people do that in the terminal and yeah. you might be able to do that on board somewhere. I don't know, but yeah. um, that's a good tip too. What about if you're thinking like, when I get on board, first thing I'm going to do is go to the buffet, but the second thing I'm going to do is go to the pool. Right. You want to bring a a change of clothing. Bring a, bring your sw swimsuit in your carry-on bag so mm -hmm. you can change, go to the bathroom and put on your swimsuit. Right. And uh, with your carry-on, you may want to pack a towel so you have a, a towel. Sure. If you go swimming or if you need sunblock for the sun mm -hmm. or... Yeah, if you're one of the people that's maybe not going to get in the pool, but you want to kind of hang out by the pool in one of the one of the chase lounges, you want that sunscreen or sunblock. Yeah, right. That's good. That's a lot of good information on things you'd want in your carry on. Uh, comment below if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, the video version of the podcast. Comment below and let us know what we have left out of the bag there. We're going to get into more packing uh, tips here. Um, but while we're stopping here for just a second, we're just going to ask that you like us. If you're watching us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up down below. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, also known as iTunes, at least it used to be, um, iHeartRadio or Spotify, be sure to give us a follow. And if you're watching us now and you're thinking, hey, I want to listen instead or listen sometimes what I'm traveling or doing yard work be sure to follow us on apple Podcasts, iheart radio and spotify that's right yeah and what about go ahead so sometimes you say that i have a magic purse or a magic bag because mm -hmm. it has everything mm -hmm. <laughs> it has like medic medicine cough syrup or cough medicine cough drops uh, it also has a mm -hmm. fan, a hand fan in case I get too hot. Yeah. Or it also has like a uh, a battery backup for my phone, mm -hmm. you know, and it just, I just put a lot of stuff in my handbag. So sometimes they weigh a lot because mm -hmm. I have, uh, I've thought of situations that I, that I might need such as mm -hmm. a bandaid or a cough drop yeah. or whatever that might you 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 are very organized and i think especially when you go on cruises a few times um it doesn't take a lot of cruises a lot of cruise experience to realize oh next time i better include this because we'll need it and it's better to have it not need it than uh, the reverse right yep or you don't want to be that person stuck in a foreign port and realize that you forgot to pack sunscreen so you go to the port to buy sunscreen oh, yeah. and instead of having to pay 10 12 20 bucks you're paying 50 to 60 dollars just for That's a small bottle of sunscreen that doesn't work when so, you try and put it on sounds like you're talking about from experience there exactly let's move on to the heart of the suitcase let's move on to the key thing that i think of when i think of packing and that's your outfits yeah. What should people know? And, and maybe they haven't been on a cruise before, so they don't really know what kind of different types of outfits they might want to think about for women, for men, maybe kids. You know, what kind of outfits should you pack? So, of course, you'll want to have just casual wear. Mm -hmm. So when you're just um, hanging out on the cruise ship or just walking around on the ports, you want to have comfortable cruise mm -hmm. clothes that you can walk and sure. sit and and everything mm -hmm. and then there's there's nights that they have dress up oh yeah occasions such as a a white party or mm -hmm. uh, they have a theme of a color so it could mm -hmm. be all black tie or, or 80s they, night we've seen 80s that before night, yep. mm -hmm. or they have um just themed different parties you know mm -hmm. so if it's if you're on a Halloween cruise, you may need to pack a Halloween a costume. costume. Or exactly. you may want to, yep. <laughs> but can we back up for just a minute and go back to the dress up, the elegant night or the formal night or whatever they call it. Um, most every cruise is going to have at least one night where it's more of a dress up night. Mm -hmm. And it's, depending on the cruise line, it's either encouraged or pretty much mandatory. It, it depends. But typically when it comes to the restaurants, that's where it really matters, especially guys. 
be sure you know what's required. Um, there have been times where, where uh, people in a party or myself didn't have the right outfit for a formal night or elegant night dining, mm -hmm. even though I'd been to the same restaurant the night before, um, because they have strict rules about collared shirts or maybe even they require a, a tie or a suit jacket. Right. And they've got requirements for women too, but I guess the women most of the time seem to be better prepared than us guys. So be sure to check out the, the formal outfits. Right. So casual outfits, formal outfits, what considerations for clothing might you want to consider if you're going to go on an excursion or you're going to different ports? So if you're going on an excursion, it really depends on what type of excursion it is. If you're going like on a beach excursion, mm -hmm. you may want to bring your suitcase, your swimsuit, mm -hmm. your suntan lotion. And if you think you might go scuba diving, mm -hmm. you want to bring your scuba diving stuff if you have that. Not, or, the, not the tanks. They won't let you bring the tanks on board. <laughs> or yeah. or um, your mask and your flippers if you want to, or your beach yeah. shoes. Yeah. So check with the cruise line first before you start bringing, uh, you know, like a, a rubber dinghy or anything. Right. Um, yeah. But then also if you're, if you know that you're going to do a lot of walking, you may want to make sure you have some good walking shoes mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. hiking shoes. And if you yeah. know that you're doing a lot of physical activity, you mm -hmm. may be zip lining or oh. hiking or, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what, excursion you're going on you want to make sure you're dressed yeah. for that excursion and that you have the proper things such as bug spray or sunscreen well, we're talking about outfits we'll get into bug spray and sun bug spray and sunscreen in just a minute too and you you mentioned that that's that's great but you also mentioned earlier you mentioned different types of cruises and climate and that sort of thing so mm -hmm. we've done caribbean cruises we've done um alaskan cruises alaskan cruise even when the weather is a little warmer, which, you know, Alaskan cruises don't happen in the wintertime, um, but you're going to want a different set of outfits than you might if you're going on a Caribbean cruise, even in the same month, right? Right. And depending on the season that you're in, mm -hmm. it can also depend on what clothes you bring. So yeah. if you're going through hurricane season, you want to make sure that you have, you know, wind shorts, resistant clothes. wind resistant or... <laughs> Or it may be, you just will always want to check what type of weather you might be having. Uh -huh. So you you have, like, if you need a jacket or a mm -hmm. sweatshirt, you have it available. I mean, yeah. I've gone on cruises where I've forgotten to bring mm -hmm. a sweatshirt or jacket, and then I'm cold for the yeah. whole cruise. And so I have to end up buying more clothes because I forgot yeah. to pack the clothes. That's a good point. Um, be prepared for the temperature on board the ship as well as temperature outside and off the ship. Uh, you might want to, you might be thinking, oh, we're cruising in the Caribbean in summertime. It's, I'm not going to need anything, uh, but really, you know, like shorts and, you know, light clothes. And then you realize that your room is super cold or the ship itself is super cold or the weather is unusually cool, at least in the evening. You might want that sweatshirt or something like that. Right, and, and it depends yeah. on if you run hot or cold. So, it does. So mm -hmm. I usually yeah. run cold. So. Well, that's good to know. Um, it, but going back to Alaska for just a minute, in other places like that, uh, Norway or, or places that are really green are green for a reason, and that's because you get a lot of rain. So be sure you have your rain gear or ponchos for places like that. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to non-clothed non-clothing items, you want to be sure to pack in your main suitcase. You mentioned the sunscreen. Uh, right. You mentioned insect spray, I think. Yeah. And that's going to depend on where you're going. The time of year may play a factor. Um, if you're not planning on getting off the ship at all, maybe bug spray is not that important. If you're not going to be somebody who lays out or you're not very uh, sensitive, you, you, you know, your, your, your skin doesn't get burnt easily. Different. But what other types of items might you Hats. want? Remember? Hats. Oh, so sometimes when we were, I think in it, Tichinista, Tichinista yeah. you forgot your hat mm -hmm. and it was so hot out and you were worried that you'd get sunburn on yeah. your head because mm -hmm. it was so hot and but fortunately they sell everything at Chichen Itza. most <laughs> of it's <laughs> almost free only a dollar <laughs> and in my case I got a child's hat that I thought was an adult's hat until I put it on so I wore that around <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that was that was a good look. Uh, so so yeah, hats are really important. What about if you're going on like when we went to Alaska, we did the whale watching and binoculars. Oh came yeah. In handy, you know. So yeah, if you're doing uh, an uh, uh, excursion such as whale watching or mm-hmm. where you may not want to use your phone, but you want a professional like camera that you can mm-hmm. take professional pictures of of the animals or the scenery around you Mm -hmm. then definitely bring it because you'll be sad that you don't have those items to see like the whales jumping in the distance you know Mm -hmm. relying on your eyesight and if you have eyesight like mine you're like (laughs) what is that it looks like a gray mountain moving (laughs) joy you're looking the wrong way um (laughs) Yeah, and also um, we, we talked about your prescription medication earlier, but also if you're prone to get seasick or if you're not sure because it's your first cruise and you want to play it safe, be sure to get your motion sickness pills oh, yeah. or there's other, you can talk to your farm, your, your doctor or pharmacist about different options. They've got the things behind the ear, they've got the bands, they've got prescription medication, they've got right. over-the-counter, what, uh, Dramamine is the most popular probably name brand. So be sure you have stuff like that too. And if you have, if you're allergic, make sure you have your allergy medicine oh, yeah. or so in, just in case something might happen where you, there's a item in your food that you're allergic to and you didn't realize it. You want to have that allergy medicine or immediate medicine right. that will help save but, your life. But, but also <laughs> let, let your server know if you have any food allergies. We're getting a little off topic here, but but that's that's always, uh, they typically will ask you that, but let them know. Um, uh, being on a cruise ship is not a good place to have a medical emergency. And I won't go into the whole cruise insurance thing or whatever, but that's something we do too. Let's get back into the suitcase for a minute here. Not literally, but let's get into the suitcase and talk about some other things you need to pack that you are the queen of stateroom items, things you need to make your stateroom cleaner, safer, and more livable, more organized. What kind of things do you pack in your suitcase for the stateroom? So because a lot of the cruise ships have metal walls, Mm -hmm. um, I pack hook magnets. So you can use these hook magnets to hook your, put your hat on, your scarves, your lanyards, um, extra clothing just Mm -hmm. to have on the wall or so hook magnets come in handy tea light candles if you're in an interior room and it's really dark and you forgot to leave a light on Mm -hmm. and you're trying to find the bathroom in the middle of the night so you don't go bump in the night and (laughs) break your toes or something or fall over a chair or anything it's nice to have a little tea light yeah. tea light um, candle, candle. Mm-hmm. not an actual candle, but one of those like big tea light candles. Right. Another thing is that I've noticed is, you know, sometimes rooms stink <laughs> hey. because yeah. of whatever, you know, bodily. Okay. That's just, <laughs> what, what do you do to make your room so smell better? Come on. let's. Do it's it. good to have like air freshener, you know, such as Febreze or, mm-hmm. um, Essential oils. Some people like Essential to use. Oils. Well, sure. we, we get we, we usually take those non aerosol like they're like purse size. They're like 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 the size of like a, a cologne or something. Right. You know? and, and you can just spray. But we usually keep it in the bathroom in mm-hmm. case uh, the smells from the other bathroom nearby or whatever lurking. You know, you want to. There's not like you might have a at home on the cruise ships we've been on, they don't have like a strong exhaust fan. There's a vent, but if you want to keep it nice for the next person, um, or like I say, sometimes, you know, smells can move in from other cabins, um, especially on a worship spray, half spray for the bathroom. Yeah. I think that's a really good one. The first thing you do when we get into a stateroom before I can even film or take photos is, and you've done it for every cruise we've been on is you, not that you don't trust the room steward, but you know they don't have a lot of time between mm-hmm. the person, the time the last people left and the time we get there. You get out what? I get out these wet wipes or mm-hmm. san- sanitization wipes. Disinfectant, so, like Clorox? Right, yeah. dis- disinfectant mm-hmm. wipes. So I just, for, for my comfort and well-being, sure. I like to make sure that it's 
is as clean as possible because, you know, need no neither one of us want to get sick on a cruise. I don't know so, anybody that does, yeah. <laughs> so it just makes me feel more comfortable knowing that I've sanitized the room also. Yeah, I think that's a really so. good one. And one last one we'll throw out. I mean, there's probably others. So comment if you can think of others that you uh, recommend. But check with the cruise line because this one can be tricky. You probably, especially a lot of the cruise ships that aren't brand new, you'll find really one, only one outlet. One uh -huh. outlet for your country's, you know, whether it's U.S. or European, um, you know, plug in and if you have multiple things like phones you need to charge cpap machines whatever it is you might need help especially if that one outlet like a lot of times seems to happen is nowhere near where you need it don't bring a power strip because most cruise lines every cruise line i think we've been on doesn't allow the power strips with the surge protection because those can cause problems with the ship's circuitry and be a fire hazard bring just a basic extension cord now, mm -hmm. again, even on extension cord check, because the cruise lines get really um, cautious when it comes to electricity and fire hazards. So, but generally you can bring just a basic extension cord. And yep. we, I found because there's so many electronics now that are connected by USB, mm -hmm. you can actually get these plug-in USB ports. Mm -hmm. So you can connect your, your phones, your tablets, your computers, mm -hmm. all in one and still have extra ports for whatever other ob electronical devices that yeah. may need a USB port. Just be sure it doesn't have search protection. That's that's where you can get in trouble and they'll confiscate it and you're not going to get it back. Right. Um, it, we, we mentioned uh, the, the power strip thing over and over here thing, I guess. But what other things should people not pack? This is the anti-packing segment. So anything that's that has a heat element, such mm -hmm. as curling iron, mm -hmm. an iron, mm -hmm. um, hair straightener, hair straightener, mm -hmm. um, could be a fan or a heater if you get cold, mm. electric blanket, toaster <laughs> oven, <laughs> or even, like I've heard some people bring rice cookers, no, just craziness, you, you know. Get. So yeah. So if in doubt, check with your cruise line. Also, this is a controversial topic topic among some uh, some cruisers we know, some who we really like, uh, who uh, like to find ways to get alcohol on board. And the way to get alcohol on board is to purchase it or to get a drink package, not to sneak it on. And that's just our opinion, my opinion. But technically, you can get in trouble. At least they will dump it out if they find it on you. Some cruise lines will allow you to take like what a bottle of wine per person, mm -hmm. but they're not going to allow hard liquor, beer. Um, some cruise lines will allow you to bring soda, but right. we're talking about what else you can not bring. Is there anything else you can think of? I think you covered it really uh, well with the heating elements and appliances. So don't bring any weapons. God forbid. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, yeah, I, sometimes you unfortunately you have to mm -hmm. remind people don't bring weapons well, on that's board. True. This day um, and age, yeah. Unless it it is has an excursion but then make sure that your excursion well if you're doing hunting or I well don't no know. check with the cruise line before right. you tell people to bring their hunting rifles yeah. right definitely check with the cruise line yeah. if there is an excursion that involves hunting or yeah. whatever again check with the cruise line on their restrictions for anything you bring on board but this this video has been primarily or this podcast if you're listening i don't even know what to call it sometimes this podcast has been a while packing so hopefully we've given you some good ideas um if you've enjoyed this sort of information before we wrap things up here just want to remind you subscribe if you're watching on youtube or if you were listening now come over to youtube check us out at cruise day fun and subscribe you can subscribe if you're watching now on youtube by clicking the subscribe link below and uh, we have a lot of cruise videos and more to come you can also listen anytime to uh, the cruise day fun podcast on spotify iHeartRadio. Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Music. You can listen or watch on YouTube. With the YouTube Music app, you can do just the straight-up audio. Right. And we do this for you just so you're aware and prepared for your cruise so mm -hmm. you you can enjoy your cruise. That's right. That's, that's the whole reason why we do our podcast. That's right. Is We want you to be able to 
have the information so you're well prepared and you can enjoy your cruise. Yeah, we want you to be happy. Exactly. Have enjoy some cruise the cruise day fun. Exactly. That's right. Now, before we totally wrap up here, um, we got to talk about the least fun part, oh. the saddest day of all. Um, now, the night before you get off, you're typically going to be told you can leave your bag in the hall, get a luggage tag somewhere on board, they bring it to you, put it in the hall, and they'll have it waiting for you in the terminal the next morning. But what should people know about repacking, packing all stuff back in their bags, uh, whether it's a, the carry-on uh, backpack you were talking about before or the uh, check bag? What should they know? So what I do is I make a list. So mm -hmm. everything that I pack, it goes on a list. So when I have to repack, I go through the list and make sure that everything that I have that I brought is still in my suitcase that I brought. Right. Unless it's like disposable items, you know. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> You're not going to take those back with you. Right. So, and then also remember to, if you bought alcohol or if you bought pack uh, picture packages mm -hmm. or if you bought souvenirs, make sure that it goes on your list so you don't forget those items. Yeah, because a lot of times, I mean, the things you're talking about there, you got to pick them up. Sometimes they'll deliver them to your room, but most cruises we've been on, you got to remember to pick them up right. before you leave the ship. And God forbid if you forget a suitcase of, of your important camera or electronic devices, mm -hmm. such as your computer, you don't want to have to worry about, oh, did I lose all that important information? Did right. I lose that important a computer that has all my information. You can tell she's a, so. a YouTube creator. She's thinking about all the photos <laughs> and the information. Yeah, that's important. Right. But let's talk specifically before we wrap up here about that carry-on. What's the difference between, let's assume that you're going to put your luggage in the hall. We know typically a lot of times there's an option to uh, do your self-assist where you take all your baggage off by yourself the next morning. But most people put the bag in a hall and keep like a carry-on. What's the what should you think about keeping to put in your carry on that you carry off yourself? Uh, so again, if you're going to do uh, so, it's just the opposite. You want to make sure you have your change of clothing, mm -hmm. your toiletries if you need it in the morning, your medicine mm -hmm. that you may need in the morning, and um, any make sure you have the important documents such as your passport, your driver's license, and any medical stuff. Yeah. So make yeah. sure you have all that in your overnight bag. So when you leave the ship and go into, what is that, the foreign, um, go to the foreign. Customs. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. go through customs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go through custom, and they ask you what you declare. Mm -hmm. um, I have a funny yep. story about declaring. We don't have anyways. time for that now. We'll, we'll <laughs> to, to join our Facebook group, and we'll share that in a future uh, Facebook group exclusive video. <laughs> uh, but you you want to be prepared because we know we've seen passengers getting off the ship on that last morning wearing their pajamas. And you know why they were? Because they didn't think to keep out clothes for the next morning. So they're wearing what they wore to bed. You don't want to be that person. And if you're a parent who does the packing for your kids, Keep that in mind. Be organized like Joy suggests. Have that list for everything that's going into the suitcases when you leave home and then goes back in the suitcases when you leave. Have those clothes and important things set aside for the next morning so they can brush their teeth, take any, any vitamins or medication that any of you need to take, and have clothes to wear off the ship uh, so you don't look like you're refugee, refugees cutting off <laughs> the ship. Um, and, and make sure you yeah. count your kids to make sure you have all the same well, is this kids. This is a home alone reference. <laughs> I think this exactly. is where, is, any, any more final thoughts? I think that might be it. Um. Okay, so <laughs> in, uh, in, then I think we're going to wrap it up. We want to thank you for listening and or watching. Exactly. Um, tune in again. We have another Cruise Day Fun Podcast. I can never remember how we end this. How do we end this? Be safe and have, be safe and, in, and be kind to each other. Yeah, that works. Fun, fun, fun for cruise day fun, 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 fun for cruise day fun podcast.